You can find Broad Street Presbyterian Church on Facebook and Instagram. Please like our Facebook page at BSBC Columbus or find us on Instagram at Broad Street underscore church. Follow us for great new content available from anywhere in the world, anytime, day or night. Good morning, friends, and Merry Christmas. Welcome to worship with the community of the Broad Street Presbyterian Church. On Christmas morning, we're home, celebrating remotely, yet connected by the power of God's Holy Spirit. Merry Christmas to you. Today, we celebrate incarnation, God moving into the neighborhood. Thanks to Brittany Porch, who's reading the Christmas story from her home. Thanks to John and Christy Clay and Art Gure, who reflect on incarnation from their homes. Thanks to Bill Boggs, Rachel Sepulveda, and Michael Ruda, who sing Come to the Stable. And thanks to Pastor Amy Miracle, who offers a prayer experience shaped around incarnation. Merry Christmas. Christ is born. Join with me in prayer. Let us pray. Gracious God, on Christmas Day, you meet us wherever we are and embrace us with love. You accept all of our fumbling attempts at life and relationships and cover them with grace. We celebrate your incarnation God with us, Emmanuel, in every time, in every place. Amen. On Christmas Day, the peace of Christ be with you all. Amen. Merry Christmas! Good morning from our house to yours. We wanted to say Merry Christmas, right, Arden? Red magic. We hope you're cozy in your Christmas PJs like we are, but we wanted to take a little bit of time um, to read the Christmas story with you one more time this season. You ready, kids? Yeah, we're ready. All right, this is The Tiny Baby is Born from Luke chapter 2. Mary and Joseph packed quickly. They needed to go to Bethlehem to be counted by the emperor. Mary was worried. Can you show me your worried faces? Where would they stay? Joseph was concerned. Would they be gone a long time? Mary and Joseph were both excited. Show me your excited faces. (laughs) Soon their son Jesus would be born. Bethlehem was crowded with people. Knock, knock. Mary and Joseph knocked on the door after door and there was nowhere for them to stay. Squeeze! Mary grabbed Jesus' hand real tight. The baby was coming. That night, Mary would give birth to a tiny baby. It was Jesus. Joseph found a simple wooden manger for Jesus' bed, and Mary wrapped the newborn son tightly in cloth and laid him in the, on the golden hay. The baby Jesus yawned with his tiny mouth and Joseph touched the tiny fingers. Mary looked at his tiny wrinkled face and smiled. And in, you're smiling? Let's see our smiles. In a nearby field, shepherds watched the starry sky. Look up in the sky. In the quiet night, a bright light flashed. Shepherds jumped. An angel appeared. The shepherds tried to hide. Don't be afraid. The angel said, I have good news. Tonight the Messiah was born. God's son has come to be with you and his name is Jesus. A choir of angels filled the sky and the shepherds were amazed. Show me your amazed face. Wow. 
The angel songs echoed across the hills. Glory to God and peace on earth. Echo! The shepherds hurried to see Jesus and they raced the, on the hills oh, yeah, shouting the good I news. Know, know. Jesus is okay. born. Can you all say that with me? Jesus, Jesus is born. born. Let's say it one more time since it's Christmas Day. Jesus, Jesus is born. Born. Merry Christmas from our family to yours. A reading from the Gospel of John, Chapter 1. The Word was first, the Word present to God, God present to the Word. The Word was God, in readiness for God from day one. Everything was created through Him. Nothing, not one thing, came into being without him. What came into existence was life, and the life was light to live by. The life light blazed out of the darkness. The darkness couldn't put it out. The word became flesh and blood and moved into the neighborhood. We saw the glory with our own eyes, the one of a kind glory, like father, like son, generous inside and out, true from start to finish. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. What does Christmas mean to us? Like many Broad Street families, when we think of Christmas, we think of our traditions, the rituals we know will happen and make us smile each year. I know John and the kids will attempt to display every Christmas theme knickknack we own, and I will secretly attempt to put some of the more kitschy ones back into storage. We still have the Kmart fake Christmas tree that we bought on Christmas Eve in 2001 when our twins were only a few weeks old. We were planning on cutting down a tree on the morning that I went to the hospital. In the chaos of the first few weeks of taking care of the twins, we never got to put up a tree. Seeing this old tree brings back good memories. We'll travel to Granville to Timbuk Farms to pick out and cut down our Christmas tree. Every year we take a picture with the kids by the Santa sign that has a scale to measure how tall they are that year. We'll decorate the tree with ornaments that we've passed down year to year. These mark activities and milestones of our lives together. Some of the ornaments are from the early 80s that we still put on the tree. We listen to many of our favorite Christmas songs, especially Celine Dion's Oh Holy Night and Handel's Messiah. More recently, our favorite selections include Phoebe Bridger's Christmas Song and If We Make It Through December, which is sure to put a tear in John's eye. Just as likely to annoy John, the kids and I will sneak in those songs that he, to put it subtly, loathes. <laughs> Mariah Carey's All I Want for Christmas is You and any rendition of Feliz Navidad and I Want a Hippopotamus for Christmas. We'll get Christmas cards from friends old and new. We're particularly fond of cards that have pictures of family friends and those cards that include notes that give us an update on what they did this past year. On Christmas morning, we will set out Christmas gifts for the kids, each with their own type of wrapping paper so they know whose gifts are whose. We will keep the tradition of opening stockings when they first get up, but not opening up presents until everyone is up and has eaten breakfast, typically monkey bread. We hit the road to visit family. We typically eat together with both of our families. This gives us a chance to catch up with parents, brothers, nephews and nieces. We'd see the younger kids open up presents and enjoy the adult gift exchange. As we get older, we have also come to understand the complexities of this time of year. There have been struggles and setbacks, hardships and sadness, some of which we acutely faced this year. We are made aware that life is fragile and precious, not unlike a newborn baby in a manger. But with the Incarnation, we are called to embrace the mystery and hope of a future that God can bring. It is a reminder that God is with us, claims us, and loves us. 
We celebrate this holy night where he appeared and the soul felt its worth. May each of us feel the worthiness, the love, and peace that the birth of Christ brings us this year and every year. We wish you the best for the holidays and hope you have a wonderful Christmas. my childhood and adult life, Christmas and the Advent season have always been the most significant and enjoyable holidays. When it comes to the Incarnation, I cannot help but to reflect on what it means to me based on my early childhood and adult experiences. I very fondly remembered my early years growing up in a very small and rural village in Guyana and the Christmas celebrations in our home and our village. The village I grew up in at that time had no electricity. And the only time of the year that stores remained open at night was Christmas Eve and they were lit with kerosene lamps. As kids, 
it was a festive occasion for us visiting the stores on Christmas Eve. Association of special night lights with Christmas has always remained with me. The yard we grew up in had four houses. Ours was a Christian home, and my great grandmother and grandfather's brothers were Hindu homes. Next door to us, where the yards are opened to everyone and no boundaries, and where we can roam freely and pick fruits from each other yards, was our neighbor, a staunch Muslim. So we grew up celebrating with folks in my village holidays like Christmas, Diwali, a Hindu religious festival, Eid ul Fitr, the celebration after Ramadan. Growing up, many of my closest friends belonged to the other two religions. So I actively participated and embraced their holidays. I always found Christmas to be very special compared to the others. In latter years, I found many similarities between the celebrations. Christmas, the incarnation, Eid al-Fitr, the revelation of the Quran, and Diwali, the festival of lights celebrating good over evil. I will get back to Diwali in a little bit. However, witnessing my grandmother's faith and listening to her stories around reincarnation, as a kid, I thought of Christ as a reincarnate, as opposed to the incarnation, where God shows his love for us by making a way through Jesus. It took many years for me to separate out the re in the birth of Christ. Growing up in a Presbyterian church and thought the Advent incarnation story, I had many questions regarding the differences between Christianity, Hinduism, and Islam. As I became older, this search led me to better my understanding and faith growing around the Christmas story. I have brothers-in-laws and sister-in-laws that are Hindus and Muslims. Christmas and the incarnation stories in, particularly, in particular uh, made me appreciate the commonality in beliefs between these religions. And my exposures and learnings, I felt very comfortable as a Christian to drop the re in front of incarnation. Reincarnation is a key belief with, within Hinduism. Hinduism. In Hinduism, all life goes through birth, life, death, and rebirth. Karma is attached to the idea of reincarnation. There's an ongoing cycle of birth and death conditioned by karma and linking an individual to past and future. In reincarnation, the spirit or soul survives death and is reborn into a new body, human or non-human. For Hindu religion, our equivalent to Christmas is Diwali. I have celebrated many Diwalis. It's a celebration of victory of the good over evil and the festival of lights. Like Christmas, Diwali is marked by displays of colorful lights and bright holiday clothes and gift given sweets. We believe that the incarnation is the truth that Jesus became a human being in order to live and die as an atonement for our sins. For me, the birth of Jesus, or the term incarnational, describes the way that we Christians should live in this world and not focus on karma. For Islam, according to their beliefs, God could never become man. God can't have a son in an Islamic world. He's too distant, too holy. It's physically impossible and theologically inconceivable. However, Muslims do believe Jesus is a prophet who spoke truthfully. For me, Christmas helps with solidifying the many religious conflicts that I have experienced, just like Mary treasured, treasured the whole experience while Joseph wrestled through the shameful implications of marrying a miraculously pregnant woman. Christian, Christmas is about the incarnation and there are few truths so radically life-changing. Now, now, circling back to the missing re in incarnation, in the early 70s, I used to listen to Paul Harvey on the radio. I record him, I recall him telling the story one Christmas season. I'm not an orator like Paul Harvey, I will not read it here. You can listen to his version on YouTube. It is entitled The Man and the Birds by an unknown author and narrated by Paul Harvey. It is a story about a good man who had doubts about the incarnation and refused to go to Christmas Eve service with his family. 
While his family was at church, he tried to rescue some birds, but realized he couldn't because he was not like them. The bird, to the birds, he was a stranger. And in order to help the birds, he must become one of them. Merry Christmas to all. Merry Christmas. It's so good to spend time with you all on this special day in this special season. Our service today focuses on incarnation, this wild and wonderful idea that God chooses to become human. God chooses to have a body, which means maybe we need to think a little differently about our own bodies, to think of our bodies as a place where God might wish to dwell. That's a challenge. I think that's a challenge for most of us um, to see our bodies not as something we need to improve, fix, a source of disappointment and at times even shame, but rather, rather our bodies as a place in which God chooses to dwell. What if we think of our bodies as God blessed? So our prayer today are, is going to focus on our bodies and you can keep your eyes open or your eyes closed. Um, but either way, I invite you to plant, have, have your feet on the ground, be, root yourself um, and let us pray. We begin, O oh God, giving thanks for our feet. Uh, they connect us to the earth, to the ground. They connect us to all that you created. Lord, we next give thanks for our legs, for all the places that we travel we think back on the last year, we think of valleys and mountaintops, and we give thanks for all the ways in which you have accompanied us on the journey of this past year. Lord, our attention shifts to our bellies, and we give you thanks for all the ways in which you have sustained us, nourished us, and fed us. Our attention now shifts to our lungs as we breathe in your spirit. We give thanks for the gift of life. And we also pause and remember and give thanks for those who've died in this past year. And we recommit them to your care. Lord, help us breathe in your spirit. Our attention next goes to our shoulders and our, our neck and our back. And as with your help, we try to let go of all that is not ours to carry. Lord, remind us that you are the one responsible for all things, not us and help us uh, to turn over to you those things which belong to you. Help us to let go in these moments. Lord, we next give thanks for our hands uh, that are so wondrously and beautifully made. And our attention shifts away from ourselves and to all, all of the opportunities taken and also those not taken uh, to connect and touch other, other people. Um, Lord, we thank you for opportunities to connect and serve and love in tangible ways. Lord, lastly, we give you thanks for our faces, each one of them different. Um, we thank you for, for the diversity of all that you have created, especially among we humans. And Lord, now we focus on the face of Jesus. We think of the words that he speaks to us, 
uh, words of challenge, words of hope, words of comfort. We think of the ways in which his ears listen as they listened deeply to those around him, as they listen to us even now. We think of his eyes. We think of the way he, he would see people, could see people that the rest of the world didn't seem to take much notice of. Lepers, prostitutes, tax collectors, the outsiders, the broken. We give you thanks for the ways in which he sees us, in which he sees every part of us. Lord, today we give thanks for your decision to be born among us, for your decision to become human. We thank you for the ways in which you remind us that you dwell in our actual lives. Lord, for all these things, we give you thanks this Christmas day. Amen. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. Christ's light shines in every corner of our lives. Christ's light shines in every corner of the world. Emmanuel, God with us. May that same God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May God look upon you with kindness and grant you peace. Amen.